In May 2024, the United Nations World Health Organization, the WHO, could be Earth's first truly global government. Through the combination of a new global pandemic accord called the Pandemic Prevention Preparedness and Response, PPPR, and the amendments to the 2005 International Health Regulations, the IHR, the documents as presently drafted, quote, would fundamentally change the relationship between the WHO, its member states, and naturally their populations, unquote. There will exist a non-accountable fascist system of governance. WHO is a global bureaucracy of appointees. Starting in 1948, the goal was access to better health. But since the year 2000, WHO has become heavily dependent on private foundations and pharmaceutical companies for funding. WHO amended its pandemic definition in 2009, enabling lockdowns in 2020. Herd immunity was also redefined and mass vaccination became the main thing. Abandoning its stated principles, the WHO now minds the machinery of global population control. Now, according to the Brownstone Institute's David Bell, quote, the WHO proposes that the term, with full respect for the dignity, human rights, and fundamental freedoms of persons, be deleted from the text of the IHR, replacing them with equity, coherence, and inclusivity. Vague terms, the applications of which are then specifically differentiated in the text according to levels of social and economic development. The underlying equality of individuals is removed and rights become subject to a status determined by others based on a set of criteria that they define." Unquote. Under the new IHR Article 13a, states are required to follow WHO recommendations and could be compelled to incarcerate, inject, require identification of medical status, medically examine, isolate, and or restrict the travel of individuals. So there you've got a digital ID uh, all over the place. Now the proposed legally binding agreements would incorporate WOS and WOG models of operation whole of society and whole of government. Now these envision the enlistment of people at all levels into the support of a single narrative for the common good. Government, the medical cartel, social and other media, banks, lawyers and other professionals would be mustered in support of a single preferred story handed down by the WHO. The WOS approach of society means that religious organizations, churches, churches owning hospitals, etc., will be expected to support a single story. The proposed accord especially addresses wrong think. In Article 1C, the proposed PPPR accord defines terms. Quote, infodemic means too much information false or misleading information in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. It causes confusion and risk-taking behaviors that can harm health. It also leads to mistrust of health authorities and undermines the public health and social measures." Unquote. Yeah, too much information during a, a global public health emergency? What's that? That means information that they don't like or don't want you to have. Now, Article 18.1 of the PPPR Accord says this, quote, the parties shall strengthen science, public health, and pandemic literacy in the population, as well as access to information on pandemics and their effects and drivers. It goes on to say that they will combat false, misleading, misinformation or disinformation, including through effective international collaboration and cooperation, as referred to in Article 16, unquote. So yes, somebody uh, of these unelected elites declares that certain information is false or misleading or disinformation, and now here comes the censor with his scissors. Governments signing the accord are required to act against content having been labeled as false, misleading, misinformation, or disinformation. But how can this commitment be reconciled with America's constitutional right to free speech? Now, of special concern it, under the PPPR are the powers that are granted to the WHO Director General. Quote, the Director General shall determine on the basis of information received, in particular from the state party within whose territory any event is occurring, whether an event constitutes a public health emergency of international concern in accordance with the criteria and procedures set out in these regulations. So this empowers a single individual to declare a PHEIC, a public health emergency of international concern. 
with one stroke, you see. One stroke of his pen, such a declaration enables the local rule of law to be replaced by the WHO's rule of emergency. Now, the accord also requires nations to embrace WHO's One Health emphasis. One Health is a technocratic approach combining study and management of people, animals, plants, and the environment. While seeking to study interrelationships and gain new insights, it also proposes to manage these resources globally. The United States CDC has already adopted the One Health approach, advocated by the UN, the World Economic Forum, and others. The PPPR requires signatory nations to adopt the One Health approach. One Health is, is broader than many realize. Do you know that it actually includes the global food supply? So, Revelation 13, verse 16, describes a global economic lockout of those who resist the exercise of power to compel conscience. The machinery to enforce compliance on a global scale has never before existed and would have to be deployed before enacting such commands. So in summary, the Pandemic Prevention Preparedness and Response Accord, due to be signed in, in May 2024, along with changes to WHO International Health Regulations, I don't know how else to say it, it's ominous. These changes include granting powers to one unelected individual to declare a public health emergency anywhere globally, suspending the rule of law. The power to compel persons to be vaccinated or incarcerated, the use of One Health ideology to control human populations and climate resources, including food, on the basis of climate change theory, and heralds an unprecedented surrender of liberty. Interestingly, 2,000 years ago, Bible prophecy foretold a crisis, global in scope, in which governments would exercise force over individual conscience. Isn't it time to look again at what the Bible has foretold was coming? Hey, I'm Larry Kirkpatrick with Horizon Watch. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this newsletter and get some other people. If people are sleeping, maybe you can wake them up. D subscribe to the newsletter, download it, print it out, and share it with some people. Uh, you know what? We're really living in weird times, but there's good news ahead. God wins in the end. If you haven't been looking into Christianity lately, you're behind. The times are catching up with you very rapidly. May God bless you as you explore and try to understand, and as I try to understand, the things that are happening right around our ears.